We've already seen a little bit about the Arduino Uno in the context of other microcontrollers. The, mo the model that we'll be using in our MEC 217 course is the Arduino Uno R3, Revision 3. And I'm going to give you a little more detailed tour of it now, paying particular attention to the pins that we're going to use in MEC 217, the things that you need to know about. So first off, it's a standalone microcontroller. Once the uh, processor is programmed, you can start it running just by applying power. And that power can either come from a USB connector connected to a computer, or a battery, or a USB uh, charger that you might use for your phone, or from an AC adapter, one of those wall warts you might plug into the wall, with a uh, voltage of 7 to 12 volts which will be reduced down to 5 volts by this regulator here. Now you can either start the program by applying power from a state where there's no power, or you can restart the program by pressing this reset button. That'll start the whole program over again from scratch, so it'll start it doing whatever it was programmed to do all over again. Now once you've made a connection to power, you're probably going to want to be able to use some of that power to run other things that you're going to connect. Sensors, circuitry, things like that. And this collection of power connections down here will get you the power that's supplied either from the USB or the, uh, or the AC adapter input here and bring it out to these little sockets where you can plug a wire in. Now there's one socket for 3.3 volts, one for 5 volts, one, two for ground. So those four are the ones you're going to be using and there won't be enough space there to plug in all the wires you might want to connect to 5 volts. So typically we'll take one wire from 5 volts over to our solderless breadboard and then spread it out among all the things that we're trying to power with 5 volts. Likewise the 3.3 volts. We'll take it over to the solderless breadboard and the same with ground. Now this 5 volt power supply it'll either be the 5 volt supply that comes in on the USB which the exact voltage of that will depend on the computer. It may be a little less than 5 volts, it may be a little more, so that can be kind of variable. On the other hand if we plug into this uh, AC adapter plug here then this 5 volt voltage regulator will take that larger voltage down to 5 volts and that'll be fairly stable. It won't necessarily be exactly 5 volts but it won't change much when you change uh, the, the power supply up here. So that's something we'll go into in a little more detail in one of the later labs. Now when we go to power our circuits out here we're going to want to be able to measure the voltage in those circuits. And to do that, we'll connect these analog input pins to our circuit. So if I had a voltage divider over here that I was expecting the voltage to be somewhere between 0 and 5 volts, I could connect it to A0 or A1, and then I could use the processor to read the values on these pins and be able to tell what that voltage is. So that's the input that we're going to measure from most of the transducers we're going to use in the course. Now sometimes, in later labs, we're going to use either I2C or SPI serial communication to get digital information from digital sensors. And pins A4 and A5, in addition to being able to do analog input, also double for these digital serial connection pins. But most of the time we're just going to be plugging wires in here to measure the voltage the same way we would, we would use a multimeter to measure the voltage. That covers the majority of what you're going to do in 217. A little bit more is going to happen over here. These are digital input output pins so they will allow us to have a signal going either out under control of the, uh, the processor or we can read in a value that we've uh, set up on our circuit, say with a push button. So typically what we'd be doing is we'd be connecting outbound from one of these, maybe pin 13, to an LED so we could switch the LED on and off. Or inbound maybe to pin 7 from a push button so that we could detect when we pushed the button. And some of these pins 
have some special analog output capabilities. These pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 can do pulse width modulation. And that means that what they can do is they'll still be only 0 volts or 5 volts, but they'll switch on and off very quickly so that on average they might be somewhere partway in between. So if pin number 10 was on 50% of the time and off 50% of the time, then if we averaged out, that would be the same as having about 2.5 volts. And we can use that to, to some extent, fake analog outputs if we're trying to control motor speed or other things like that. So that's about the essence of all of the pins that you're going to see in MEC 217. Uh, and all of them can be connected here through these little sockets on these headers that are already soldered onto the Arduino Uno. So you'll be using hookup wire to connect those out to your uh, solderless breadboard where we'll put the actual components that we're using to make some measurements. So take a few minutes to have a look at the picture here and figure out just where all the pieces are and you'll be referring back to this over and over again to make sure that you're plugging into the right sockets when you go to make some measurements.